The Interesting Conversations with Interesting People podcast series with author Nigel Beckles. Welcome to the podcast. podcast. Please like the podcast, podcast. and subscribe podcast. to this channel. Podcast. Thank you. The very best way to promote your podcasts. Podpage makes it easy to create a podcast website with just a few clicks. Every page is optimized to be found on Google and it stays up to date forever. For more information visit podpage.com. The future of podcast promotion. Have you experienced several failed relationships or been through a divorce? How can you avoid making the same mistakes again? How to avoid making the big relationship mistakes is out now. Hi, my name is Nigel Beckles. My book is packed with practical and common sense strategies that you can use to make better relationship choices. Now you can discover the dangerous myths about love. If your relationship expectations are realistic, why you could be falling in love for all the wrong reasons. How to avoid making the big relationship mistakes. It's a book that could change your life. Available from amazon.co.uk. Kindle version also available. Author Queen P. When the mood is right, a poetry journey, mood swings, and when the mood is right, a rebirth. Books available on Amazon and all good bookstores. Hi, I'm Queen P. Please join me by tuning into my poetry podcast, The Royal Affair, on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, Google, and all other similar platforms. You have entered into The Royal Affair. Get ready for takeoff. Welcome back to my Interesting Conversations with Interesting People podcast series. My guest for this episode is an expert in the world of book publishing, Marcia M. Spence. Hi, Marcia. Welcome to my podcast series. How are you? I'm well. Thank you, Nigel. So where do you live at the moment? I live in Birmingham. Okay. And did you grow up there? Yes, I was born in Hansworth, Birmingham, and I now live actually on the outskirts of Hansworth in a place called West Bromwich in the West Midlands. And what's that like? Well, I've lived in many places across the UK. So in my childhood, I lived in Wales, I lived in Bristol, and I've lived in other parts of of Birmingham as well. It's home. The West Midlands is home. As I say, I've lived in different places. Living in Wales as a child was fantastic because that was in 1976 in the gloriously hot summer that we had. And I did horse riding, climbed trees, picked hazelnuts, picked everything, um, every fruit, blackberries, raspberries, apples. And we had so much fun out in the wilds in North Wales. So as we're talking about your childhood, when did you become interested in the written word? Ah, all my life. So as a child, my parents emphasised books for us. They came from Jamaica and I'm one of the first, you know, the first generation to be born in the UK. And the emphasis was on education. And so we were bought books. We were bought more books than we were bought toys. And my interest in the written word, I suppose, began from reading. I loved reading. I read every day. I read everything and anything. So we had sets of books with Dickens, Shakespeare, the Brontes. Um, We had sets of those books. We had encyclopedias. We had a set of books called um, Childcraft, which, again, I read, I did the activities, I read the medical journals, and I also read, you know, books, obviously children's books as well. And I read every day. I read during the day and I read every night. And that's how I was helped to fall asleep. I also liked writing, writing stories and also writing plays and directing plays as a little girl. And I, one thing that I do recall from writing stories was that when I visualized the main characters in the stories, I visualized them as, even though it was myself, I'd visualize them as white girls. And I know this now, you know, over the last, say, 10 years, I've reflected on that perspective that 
I did that because every character or the majority of characters, either in the TV programs at that time, I, I'm a child of the 60s. And so in the TV programs and also in the books that I read, the main characters were white girls. So <laughs> if I'm writing a story, I wrote and it was a white girl that I visualized, unfortunately. And so, yeah, I've always been interested in the written word. In fact, I've thrived on the written word and everything I know is through reading, whether it's a career that I've had, an idea that I have, the business that I have now, I read. And as an adult, I can see that and I've learned and people have commented, I am able to read and learn and then put it into practice. So yeah, reading is my everything. <laughs> so growing up, which book had the most impact on you? I mean, I read Peter and Jane books when I was very little, but I think a book that really stands out to me and still stands out to me is The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole. So that's one book. And I think I read that when I was about 10 years of age. And it's a, a regular boy telling his inner thoughts and his thoughts about his parents, his life, school. And I think he was a bit of an odd bod as well, which I also felt quite an odd bod because throughout my childhood, we moved around the country a lot and I changed primary school seven times. So I had to adjust to new environments over and over again. And sometimes we'd change school in the middle of term and I'd have to adjust to being in that school. There is another book and that really stands out. And do you know, the title's just escaping me, but it's about a girl who lived in Canada. And I don't know why the title is escaping me, but that was a really important book about a young girl growing up. And it was a book that I really, really loved. I don't know why it's escaping me. Hopefully it will come back. The title will come back to me later on. I also read a book called Everything You'd Like to Know About Sex But Are Afraid to Ask. <laughs> and I read that probably when I was about 14. And that, again, I'd say was a great book to read at that age. So I'm saying literally, when I say I learned about everything from books, I learned about sex from a book. I remember when I was 10 years old and I started my periods, I hadn't been told about periods by my mom or anybody else. And I'd started my period. And I remember my mom remarks that what I said to her was this, I think I've started to menstruate. And she and my aunts giggled. But I knew the correct word because I'd read about it in the books that she had supplied. And so, again, I suppose that was an important book, the medical journal, because it helped me to be informed about changes that happened to my body. So, Marcia, why did you decide to become involved with publishing books? I actually didn't decide. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. It happened. So in 2012, I embarked on um, writing for myself. At the time, I was a leadership coach for women. I'd left my 27-year career um, working, providing services for children and families and women. And I left to be free. And so I actually designed, um, I wrote a couple of books. One was about how to evaluate your year. And it, it was called New Year, New Life. And it was a workbook along with an audio CD. So I wrote that in 2012. I then wrote another smaller book for women to read, to share about some of my life experiences and also for them to do some exercises to help them with navigating, you know, what life can throw at us. And that was it. And I continued doing coaching. I organized a lot of events and campaigns around domestic abuse. And I became a radio presenter. So I was a presenter on Style Radio in Birmingham, a legal radio station. And I presented a, uh, a, a talk show 
called On the Couch with Marcia M. And I was doing the radio show and I went to interview some women, some authors, including Ava Brown and Janice Reavers and others. And it was called the Phenomenal Woman Book Tour. I went along to this tour when they came to Birmingham to interview them. And I sat there and I felt that I was in a room filled with queens. And I also identified that I'm one of those queens. I'm going to actually write my memoir. So I wrote my memoir. I had a writing coach and a publishing coach at the time and an editor. And I was taught how to publish, self-publish my book. So I did that. I marketed it well. I sponsored a radio DJ who then months, months, months before it was released, promoted it. And it was promoted on, oh, at least five different radio stations. And my book was successful. It was a memoir that went from before my birth right up to the age of 48 at that time. And I wanted to write it because I was working with many women who they were sharing. I was coaching them and helping them to overcome their obstacles. And I'd heard some people say, well, or some people would ask me when they were engaging with me, what qualifies you to be my coach? And I knew that I'd had, you know, a pretty good career, um, I had my qualifications, the type of posts I'd had. But also I had been through many, many many life challenges, crises, and had to navigate my way through. And so I wrote that book purposefully and published it and did a lot of promotion on social media. And then people just started asking me, can you help me with my book launch? Can you host my book launch? Then it was, I won an award with um, Lift Effect in Croydon in 2015, and it was called The Star of All Stars. And the following year, I went back crown and to hand over to the new winner of that and as we left the stage she said to me Marcia I want you to republish my book and I said no I said I've only published my own book I'm not this this is not what I do so that was Karen Johnson she continued and continued until I said okay I'll do it and then also at that event I met Pamela Haynes And again, Pam spoke to me about the fact that she'd written a book and I published her book. And then the the floodgates opened. And to this day, we're now eight years on from the beginning of my publishing journey. It hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped. So it wasn't ever consciously a decision of mine. I also became ill. And I think this is it. I became ill. So I was unable to deliver the coaching as I used to, run the courses, host the event, or do the radio. And I kind of came to a standstill. And I was housebound for a number of years. And so having my laptop and being able to work on books while I'm at home enabled me to have some sort of purpose. So, yeah. So when did you create your publishing company? In 2017. And what kind of challenges have you faced during your publishing journey? The fact that I hadn't planned to do it, I faced lots of challenges because it wasn't my first industry. You know, I'm qualified in social work and leadership and management. I hadn't been on any courses to publish books. And so it was a process of really learning the craft, learning the trade. I made loads of mistakes. Number one, the first one, I think, was not charging enough. I hardly charged anything for the first three few years, yet put hours and hours of work, had to pay people to put in hours of work to work on some of my first author's books. However, I understand now that it laid the foundation for where I am now. So that has been one of the issues. I think the other thing is about finding clients that fit me, working with the ideal writer, working with people who are able to work in partnership with me in a respectful way. So yeah, I've experienced a whole load of shouting at and a whole load of making a mistake and making a mistake. And I think because I was in new territory at that point, I couldn't see my worth because it was, you know, I was learning on the job. So Marcia, how many books has your company published? I'd say 
over 150 over the years, a lot. Each year, I'd say we publish around about 30 to 35 each year. This year, I scaled down my team. I have two neurological illnesses. And so whilst I was ill, I had to have a large team, a number of people assisting me. But this year I scaled right, scaled it right back. And I have done almost everything myself since February this year. And yet still I expected to have published less books, but in fact, they're just coming out really fast. I anticipate that by the end of this year, it'd probably be about 25. And that's with me working with just a PA along with me, as well as the editors and all the other people. But in terms of the core team, yeah, 25 books. So how do you support your clients regarding getting their books actually published? Well, I provide everything. So from concepts, so if somebody has an idea, then I work through with them. I am a coach. Um, I've been told I'm a very good coach. And so I use my skills to pull out the story from the client and to help them to write their manuscript. And I use questioning techniques really to delve deeper and to kind of peel the layers back. So we work from concept to delivery. Hence, I was given the name The Author's Midwife. Concept to delivery of the book. And then we also provide, I suppose, the health visiting where it's the aftercare and marketing and promotion. So any and everything that you would need to write, design, edit, register, distribute, launch, promote, the whole shebang we provide. So Marcia, what are the top three tips you would give someone who wants to become an author? My top three. My first one is do not rush. Do not embark on writing and publishing a book when you already have a book launch date in mind. When you do that, it puts pressure on you. It puts pressure on the editors. It puts pressure on the publisher. And ultimately, it can result in errors in your book. You must take your time. Number two, I believe, feel the fear and do it anyway. I mean, I wrote my memoir, Terrified. I think no matter how versed you are, even in your subject matter, the fact that you're putting your work out that's open to any and everybody's scrutiny, as well as enjoyment, it is a fearful experience. And so feel the fear and do it anyway. And number three is have it professionally edited, but also check your work, check your work check it, you're responsible. If you have a traditional deal, even check your work, make sure it's representing what you want to say. Take responsibility for your work because it's your baby. And whilst you can trust people to work on your work, you must invest into your own work and put your energy and time into making it the best that it can possibly be. So Marcia, what are your plans for the future? Currently, my publishing service is for people who self-publish. Although I have given for children, I do provide a type of, I suppose, they don't have to pay me anything and I publish their books. I am now working on transitioning into becoming a traditional publisher. My aim is by the time I'm 60, which is only a few years away, is that I am running a traditional publishing house that will enable people who particularly are neurodivergent, people who have invisible illnesses or disabilities, providing them with an opportunity to have their books published and marketed. So Marcia, if someone has aspirations to become an author, how can they contact you? Right, you can Google me and you'll find me, Google Marcia M. Spence. You can go to my website, marciampublishing.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Marcia M. Spence, uh, LinkedIn, Marcia M. Spence, and also (laughs) Google Marcia M. Spence. Look at, buy one of the books that I've published and you'll find the details there. I'm available. I'm Googleable. Marcia in Birmingham, UK. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Please. 
Please join me. Interesting conversations with interesting people. Featuring interviews with award-winning authors, relationship and life coaches, therapists and a wide variety of people with intriguing stories to share. Interesting conversations with interesting people. Please follow author Nigel Beckles' podcasts on Amazon Audible, Spotify and all major podcasting platforms. Thanks.